Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Secretary of State for Scotland, the Right Honourable Alistair Jack MP. Ladies and gentlemen, it is great to be back in Aberdeen, the centre of our mission to be nat zero here in Scotland. And, and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my Scotland office ministerial team, to thank Malcolm Offord, first of all, who recently moved to the Department for Business and Trade full time, where he's going to be responsible for exports and for UKIM. And I'd like to thank Malcolm for the great service he gave to the Scotland office. Also, John Lamont, my parliamentary undersecretary. John continues to work tirelessly for the United Kingdom government across Whitehall and across Scotland. I don't know this music. Can you hear this music, eh? What's this music? So is it my theme tune or something? I don't know. I'm retiring. I don't need a theme tune. Ah, oh, it's gone. It's gone, ladies and gentlemen. It's gone. But no, John, he works tirelessly for across, the, across Whitehall and across Scotland for, the, for, the, for our office, and I thank him. And then, of course, there's the Camerons. There's, P, there's my PPS, uh, Lisa Cameron, a truly, truly great signing by our Prime Minister. I don't think she mind me telling you that even more pleased than the Prime Minister or me was her Conservative mother who said that they can now all spend Christmas together again. <laughs> and then our most recent signing, uh, a, a man, and I, I'm sure he'd agree with me when I say this, a man whose family have come a long way since they raised a standard at Glenfinnan nearly 300 years ago, and then proceeded south to throw King George II off the throne. And had Prince Charlie succeeded back then, he would have been Charles III. So I like the fact that our King, Charles III, has appointed Donald, Lord Cameron of Loch Hill, and an excellent addition to the Scotland office he is. Ladies and gentlemen, those Camerons, and this is how I reflect on this, these, for all of us, those Camerons, and I include in that the returning Foreign Secretary, just prove that there's a road back and hope for all of us. <laughs> Conference, um, it's, been, it's been some year since, or just over a year, but some years since Nicola Sturgeon resigned. And that was hard on the heels of the unprecedented Section 35 order that I laid against her ill-conceived gender recognition reform bill. And camper vans and evidence tents aside, I think the whole nation has seen the SNP exposed for what they truly are. They are not a serious party of government, and I know that working with them day in, day out. What they are is a single issue movement obsessed with separatism. And the longer it goes on, the more our fellow Scots suffer. And I said it had been just over a year since I, I, I stopped that bill, uh, going for royal assent. And I remember it's, at that time some of the commentators said that it would lead to independence or to a second independence referendum. But others thought differently. And one of those who I needed to back me was our Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. He agreed with that decision in a heartbeat and he never wavered. And that support from him, I can tell you, has not been a one-off. For example, the Scottish Government's flawed deposit return scheme, highly inflationary, undermining an unfettered drinks market across the UK, a scheme that was unable to cater for online purchases for the elderly, the infirm, and those that couldn't take, take the recyclable products back because, as the chairman of Tesco at the time said, they wouldn't supply online any of the supermarkets any recyclable products. So there were many, many flaws, and even flaws that were pointed out by the chief exec or chairman of Tesco's at the time were ignored by the Scottish Government. And I, you know, I could go on with the flaws in that scheme, but suffice to say, Rishi saw those flaws, he agreed with it, and he backed the stance I took. And one other example. He is the only party leader to stand four square behind our oil and gas industry. Day in, day out, I witnessed the Prime Minister making decisions to strengthen our United Kingdom, to create a better Scotland, an intangible form that comes in, the, in, in, in three billion pounds that is directly invested into local governments in Scotland, through free ports, through investment zones, through the levelling up fund, through the city and region growth deals, 
through the United Kingdom Share Prosperity Fund, the Community Ownership, the Towns Funds, the, I could go on, the list goes on. But suffice to say, it is why we must and we will deliver more seats for him come the general election.